second uh, in that innings and uh, good looking form from Robin Smith with that unbeaten 61 and uh, Dermot Reeve that three for 20 earlier on well the second one so first ball of this one day international Pringle and no Rod Latham forward perhaps plays that one and here's the first runs for New Zealand single out on the offside but Andrew Jones through safely so New Zealand on the board Latham picking up one well good straight shot from Latham and that'll go away for Claire yeah, very well timed indeed over pitching a shade Lewis and slam down the ground. There's the Centurion, 100 matches in one day for England, and coincidentally, 100 test matches. Always oh, picked this one up beautifully, and that'll be four more. Very good shot indeed. after Lewis fumbled and the two batsmen were not able to communicate soon enough and the first wicket has fallen well watch this a little bit of a misfield by uh, Chris Lewis but he is one of the very best fielders in the world very athletic and agile picks it up cleanly and he's never in the same street there is he so New Zealand winning the toss and choosing to bat they're losing Latham 14 for 1 as Crow comes out to join Jones. We've got a foot movement from Jones and a good shot down the ground. Well played, Andrew Jones. Oh, well played. That's a great way to get off the mark. Mark Great Batch is back. Well, Great Batch has got home in a top and a good hit. Struggling towards the boundary. And they ran three. Good looking shot here from Jones. They should be able to run three here as Graham Gooch has another long run. And he's out, caught behind. A little nick there from Mark Greatbatch, and he is out. Caught by Stewart off the bowling of Reeve for 10, and New Zealand 35 for two. Yes, we'll see here, I would say, an almost a replay of the ball before, but Great Batch managed to catch up with that. And uh, it didn't do quite so much, but the angle was right. See that getting the batsman on the front foot? Just a little bit of movement, and uh, Great Batch nicked it and helped it to the keeper. So he departs at 35 for two. Jones on strike, he's on 16. Oh, 
Oh, driving in the air, and that's four. He really cracked that one through the covers or over the covers. looking to hit it away on the leg side it may have just brushed the pad but the end result it hit the stumps yes it may have just flicked the pad on the way through it was very much uh, leg stumpish you can just watch the line of it here angling in and yes I think it did go off his uh, pads onto middle stump would have just missed leg had it gone on its uh, original path but Jones is on his way, and New Zealand's third wicket down. Very fine, and once it gets onto the practice strips, it just runs away. Bolton is annoyed. It's a good shot from Crow. Pushing down through the line, and running quickly, they pick up three. Rutherford gets his first run. Oh. Well, there he's got hold of that one. That's much better. It was a no ball, but Crow was going for it anyway. Lofting again, and well wide of Keats this time. This will go all the way. Good shot by Rutherford. And has his first boundary. Crow goes back and he's caught. Beautifully caught by the replacement fieldsman Remper Cash. And success for Illingworth. And Martin Crow goes for 29. What a good catch. This first one was short. Crow went back to punish it. I think the pace of the pitch may have done him here. He, to me, he just played it a little too late. And uh, what a great catch. Mind you, straight to him. No reason why he shouldn't have caught that. He's an international fielder. But that would be the break that England wanted. And it's a great blow for New Zealand to see Crow out in such a manner because he looked to be batting so well. 89 for four at the end of 29. Martin Crow got out, uh, got out to. He'll be disappointed with that one. It was short and wide. Didn't control the shot. But Illingworth, a little inconsistent. Over the top it goes. And it falls safely and should run away for four. So the right-handed Ken Rutherford now to face. And uh, he's looked reasonably aggressive in the last over or so. And he's sweeping. That was down leg side, and it's keen to come back for two, but it's not there. Graham Hick, and the New Zealand 100 is up. 100 for four. Yep. And he's got this through. It won't go all the way as Ramper Cash is after it. And Harris coming back for the third, and he gets there. Well run. Overpitched, cracked through, bad ball for Millingworth, put away by Harris. It's tough to all to continue. Uh, yep. That's set up and it's clipped away. The man out deep might just cut it off. In fact, he does with a big foot, Ian Botham. But not before they've run three. And the outfield's fairly slow, so not as many runs expected now as might have been hoped for at the start. Once again, Rutherford using his feet well, hitting well. It's in the gap. The seasoned professional saves two runs. Fairbrother and De Freitas left out of the England party. Here's Rutherford going high through mid-wicket. And he'll 
Pete Bolton. And Tuffner will bowl his seventh over. His eighth over. He's caught the ball there. He's dropped him. Well, you don't get them easier than that. Rutherford was walking. Well, that catch was that simple. It was a jolly catch. He thought he got it before he actually closed his hands. Took it far too easily. See, it just comes back, spoons back. Harris is down the pitch this time, and that's the 50 partnership for the two of them. Harris to 18, 140 for four. He's over the top on the upside this time. There's no one out there. And Harris picks up another boundary. Mike Connor played a second here. Having to go. Well, that was uh, an interesting piece of cricket, Grant. Another single call for, so the New Zealand 150 has come up in the 44th over, and the run rate is around about 3.5 at the moment. And these two are not getting, not being put away for the big hits. There's a big hit. One bounce, four runs. Well, I'm glad Harris proved me wrong. That's an over of 10 at the stage is a plus for New Zealand. Harris bowls. Bingo bowled it straight. Harris tried to swing it through mid-wicket. And the end of a very good innings from Chris Harris and a good partnership with Ken Rutherford. Yes, uh, full marks of the way Harris has batted. He had to get after it. And... Uh, once again, we're going to see here that ball just doing a little bit, just drifting away from him. Perhaps he uh, played, tried to play just too much across the line there, but that's one day cricket, and if he'd got bad on it, I'm sure it would have gone for runs. Well Harris. batted, Chris Harris. Harris out for 32, 163 for five in the 46th. And so Cairns to take his first delivery now from Pringle. He's underway straight away. a lot of room it was a shorter delivery didn't seem to have much pace and a good look at the stumps for lewis and he hit them he's picked this one up and it's short of the man out deep at mid wicket so one more to rutherford on to 49 just chipped over the infield really that's so a good innings by ken rutherford but here he is ian smith his first ball of the match and he's uh, gone through with the shot. And Graham Hick again. Oh, that's a very quick throw. And Ian Smith was keen for two. Ken Rutherford wasn't. Probably just as well. And uh, Ken Rutherford now on strike. 49 runs. There we are. Good effort. 82 deliveries. thought he was on his way and was sucked in and was not able to get back when the no call came so a very good innings from Rutherford his 52 from 86 deliveries and now New Zealand 180 for seven always hit it high it won't reach the boundary as Hick comes round picks up with one hand Cyril wants another run Smith doesn't 
and in the end order is restored so Derek Pringle with the last ball of the New Zealand innings and Murphy Sewer digs it out and hits it straight down the park they'll come back for two and there's a misfield Tuffle can't pick it up cleanly and they get a comfortable two to end the innings at 186 for seven well, after batting first following their winning of the toss, New Zealand might be disappointed with that score of 186 for seven. Ken Rutherford, the best performed New Zealand batter today, 52 runs from 86 deliveries. Useful contributions also from Chris Harris with 32 and the captain, Martin Crowe, with 29. For England today, no one bowler had uh, great success. Five of them took at least one wicket, but one wicket only. There were a couple of runouts, but it was the spinners who were just a little bit more expensive than the medium paces, generally speaking, today. First ball of the England innings, their score 187, their target 187, Morrison to Gooch, and that's why. That one slipped very badly. It's a good shot. That's a very good shot, and the first boundary of the England innings. Oh, big dive, and just wide of the fieldsman. The way to the fence, Gavin Larson, I think the fieldsman at square leg. Bill for LBW, and he's out. Yes, I thought this was out. It swung just at the end. Graham Hick thinks it's going down like stump. The keeper sets off there, but the ball just swings on him, swings back into the stump. It is almost a Yorker. Probably just pitched before it hit him on the boot. I think that was a fair decision. Graham Hick departs for seven. England lose their first wicket in the fifth over, 21 for one. What a shot. Right up in the slot, and away it goes for four. Another thunderous off drive, and four more runs to Robin Smith. And he has 1,000 runs now in one day internationals with that crashing drive. <laughs> Lovely looking shot from Gooch. Cairns will do the fielding and they'll complete two runs. Oh, short, clipped away and that'll be four. Well, Chris, Chris Cairns dropping it short a little wide and you don't do that to Robin Smith and get away with it. Just trying to hold them a little here and Gooch deciding that he wanted to, to keep it ticking over and tried to run it down fine on the offside has the little devil there and just opened the face and ran it straight into the gloves of Ian Smith it's in the air it's over the top of extra cover it's four Alan name a magnificent hundred in his last innings in the test match and Robin Smith, who drives so majestically through the offside. The two players are really a handful to bowl to. Robin Smith looking for the big hoik up into the main stand. If Tara's Brook ball didn't bounce, he's been clean bowled. It's a poor shot by Robin Smith here. That ball just stayed down a bit, didn't it? I mean, it didn't really get up. And uh, Smith trying to pull that one away and hitting off stump. Another big wicket for New Zealand. Larson, obviously, the key to New Zealand's success here today. So Larson has his second wicket. England 63 for three in the 18th. So a lot of expectation around now. Alan Lamb, who defied New Zealand a couple of days ago in the Test match. That's a thundering drive again. Cairns has a big chase. And he can't quite stop it, Chris Cairns. You've got to be pretty careful over there, as you can see, because the grass turns into concrete fairly quickly. Yeah, it's a cracking off drive from Alan Lamb, but uh, I'm not sure about all these fielders diving into the fencing. Uh, one of them's going to get seriously injured, and that's going to be, I mean, what a, a team to bowl a shot. 
What a mess he's made of his trousers, his shirt and everything. The asking rate is 4.33, so that's creeping up a bit. And New Zealand could pick up a wicket or two, preferably two. Uh, who knows, this game could turn around. Hacking at this one, not getting hold of it very well. And that has missed the stumps. It might go away for four overthrows. But no. Danny Morrison way down deep prevents it. But worth a try because I think both of them would have been run out had that hit. And he's gone for the big one, both of them. And he's got hold of it and hold of it very well. Down to long on. He's gone for the big shot over the top. And it's there, straight down to the sight screen. We'll wait for umpire Dunn, who signals for. Oh, he swung that one away, high, wide and handsome. And six runs, so six runs to both of them. The England 100 is up, and they go through to 104. Rod Latham coming into the attack. He's going to be caught as a yes. just leaning into it wasn't quite there wasn't sure played a nothing shot which carried it to rutherford and a very important wicket for new zealand has been gained by rod latham bowling his first ball england now 108 for four delivery Stewart can't believe it it pitches off stump for him middle and off and it leg cuts see how it leg cuts he played inside it he was entitled to and that was a beautiful delivery he looks quite bewildered and now England just slightly in trouble at 108 for five nicely turned here by Lamb and this in fact might go to the fence it's perfectly placed that's the first boundary for some time. Alan Lamb just flicking it off his pads and away for four runs. Lamb's gone away in the air through the offside. And a brilliant piece of fielding, almost by Murphy too. Um, of Rod Latham dismisses Alan Lamb trying to turn a straight ball not too much difficulty there for the umpire to give him out a uh, touch of anger and disappointment by Alan Lamb who's played very well but I think that was fairly straightforward for the umpire a straight ball Lamb departs for 40 England 131 for 6 and the 39. Yeah, oh dear me could be a mix up here Well, only an athlete of his ability could have got back. He looked stranded in mid-pitch. Yes, he did. At one stage, he looked stranded, but he's such a quick uh, mover, a good athlete. Watch him when he gets stranded. He turns so quickly. One stage, he looked there. We could see it. The camera didn't pick it up, but he turned so quickly and got back. He was easily in. Oh, he's gone high, wide, and handsome. I think it's clear. It's got a lot of height on it and it pitches and goes into the fence over there in front of the terraces so he got it very high i didn't know how much carry he got on it but a little more than possibly i thought he's down oh he's dropped he's dropped martin crow in reasonably short on the leg side and chris lewis charging didn't get hold of it it went to crow and down it went yes sir this catch would have been taken. He had enough time, didn't he, to uh, to line it up. Still on the other side of the ledger, John. There's only one run, not two balls. But that wicket would have certainly been handy. Well, it's Reeve this time. He's gone over the top. And this is going to run away for four. There's no one down at long off. Very much a leg side as far as boundary riders are concerned. 
goes. It's a big shot. Can he get it? No, it's over the top. It's in the air. Who's under it? Great patches. He's got safely. Smith was coming back for it. They sorted it out between themselves. See how he tried to hit across the line. It was always going down. The shot was on almost too wide of him and great back steadies in the end and catches it quite comfortably and then decides to give a victory roll, I fancy. However, the result was right before New Zealand. Reid gets a full toss and he's done well. Big chase for great batch. Oh, there might be a mix-up here. Smith to get it to the bowler's end. Can he? No. He's tackled. <laughs> yeah, Paddy Batch took a long time to throw it in. He ran towards the wicket. And let's watch here. See Smith there. He had a chance, it's, didn't it's, he? It's amazing he didn't go towards his own stumps. They really only need to run a ball. There's no need for them to do anything too stupid. Well, Pringle's playing very well. Keeps the strike as the over comes to an end. 174 for seven. Two overs left. 13 runs needed. Well, Pringle's beaten by the ball. Right to hurry. See Ian Smith there just saying, keep calm, everybody. Just keep working on it. It is tense as it can be here at Carisbrook in the sunshine. It's a full toss into his pads, but a run added to the score. A run to the bat. Yes, I think he got an inside edge. Danny Morrison trying to get it up in the block hole was just a little fuller than he would have liked. But onto the pad, it meant it killed the ball, and the fielders coming in saving the single were not able to get in quickly enough to prevent that. Now Crow has got to work out whether he needs to bring another fielder in, or even two, just to try and force their hand. But of course, one shot through could be four runs, and it's a dilemma he has. He would probably need to leave the field as it is just for one more delivery. It's in the air. It's going to be safe. It's bouncing into the boundary. Well, that man out there is very square at the, on the pickup, and Pringle knows if the line of the ball is very much off stump, he can get it in front of square. He did so. Very difficult indeed to know where that player should be. He's just done. And Gavin Larson bowls brilliantly. Best figures for him, two for 24. Well bowled, Morrison. That's the job. It's in the air again. It's down the ground. It's beaten him. It's four. That's a fine shot from Pringle. He knew that the gap was there, and if he could beat mid on, it was always going to go for four. Mid offs right back to the right of your picture there, but just straight enough to elude mid on. And so England now in a very, very strong position. So a lot of thought from Martin Crow and Chris. And it's just over the head of the fielder, and that's it, perhaps. It is. It's going to be all over. Four has been scored, and England have won the second of the Bank of New Zealand One Day Internationals, and they have completed it in the last over. So England win by three wickets with just five balls to spare. Between New Zealand and England, the last of the series, a series...